Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, it's great to be back with all of you. And uh, today we have the pleasure of being with Dr. Liz Lister. How are you doing, Dr. Liz? I am doing well. How are you? Dr. Liz, it's always great to see you. And Art, you handsome guy, you buddy, my good friend, wow. Liz Sweetie. Honey, great to see you again. So, as you can see, I'm doing a, a very bad attempt at the love language, right? Mm. Remember, oh. remember the, the famous five famous love languages? So my question for you, Liz, is does it really work? Does it work? How does it work? Why does why do the languages make a difference? Wonderful. I love this topic. It's such a useful thing to know about oneself and also about your partner, whoever you or not even a romantic partner necessarily, but also the people in your life. It's useful knowing your parents love languages, your kids love languages. I just love it's such a simple paradigm. There are five five love languages. Shall we run through them first? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, these are in no particular order. These are not necessarily in the order that the the author, Dr. Gary Chapman, wrote them in. But I would like to at least try to remember all five of them. One is physical touch. Another one is quality time. Another one is acts of service. A fourth one is gifts. And the fifth one is words of affirmation. And so every my, uh, so my, my words of affirmation <laughs> that I attempt, attempted to do a minute ago were only one of the five love languages. Correct. That's exactly right. And poorly done as well, I might add. <laughs> Gee, thanks, pal. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> that would be the opposite of words of affirmation. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> and, and so it's really, really useful. And a friend of mine came up with a really good, simple way to tell which one is your love language. And that is to fill in the sentence, I only really know you love me if you, and then whatever it is, if you hold my hand, if you spend time with me, if you buy me gifts, if you say nice things to me, or if you do things for me. And whichever one is the most true for you, then that is most likely your primary love language. Everybody likes all of them, okay? But I have a, a funny story that uh, someone that I dated a long time ago, he would come visit and he would start fixing things in my house before saying hello and giving me a hug. <laughs> this was a deal breaker. It was <laughs> so you could tell from just that little example that his love language is acts of service and my love language is physical touch. So it was not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> are you, uh, but uh, so are you indicating that? Um, well, uh, uh, people may respond to all of these uh, in a positive, perhaps in a positive way, sometimes a negative way, that there is something going on in, in our chemistry that uh, helps, that, that says one of these ways just actually triggers a response in us, unlike the others. Is that sort of where That's we're getting to? Exactly right. And thank you for asking that because, or making that comment because as you both know, I see everything through the lens of hormones and hormone balance. And I came across a fun acronym to share with you, which is DOSE, D-O-S-E. These are the four main hormones, or we could also say chemicals, that are in the body that affect the brain that cause us to experience all those feelings that go with love, the anticipation, the feelings of pleasure, happiness, all of that goes along. Want to hear what those are? Mm. 
Oh, yeah. All right. So the D, you can probably guess what the D is. Most people have heard of this one, and they talk about it a lot these days, which is dopamine. Yep. Dopamine. The happy, the happy hormone. Well, <laughs> because people think of it as the happy hormone, but you know what it is even more than the happy hormone is the anticipation hormone. Ooh. Oh, so Ooh. John, that means that when you're calling me That's a dope, you're, you're, you're really, you're loving me. <laughs> there you go. Hmm. The glass half full. That's right. Wow. Anticipation hormone. I didn't know there was such a thing. Exactly. And that's important. That's absolutely right. When we're anticipating a reward, that is when the dopamine gets released. Hmm. Okay. The O, and these are not in a particular order. This is not like the scientific order that they happen in the body. Really, it's kind of a, a cascade of all these different hormones. So that's dopamine. The O is for oxytocin. We have talked about oxytocin. It often is nicknamed the love hormone or the bonding hormone, right? Yep. And oxytocin is released when we touch, when we hug, and it calms the brain, it calms the body. Uh, it's released during orgasm. It's released during breastfeeding. You know, you can tell it's in these bonding kind of scenarios. And, of course, the last while that we've all been living through where we haven't been able to hug and touch our loved ones as much has been really anxiety-provoking. Oxytocin calms that anxiety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's the, that's the O. All right. The What's F, the S? The S is serotonin. 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 It's a very ubiquitous hormone. It's people know it in the brain, and that one really is the happy hormone, John. That's the one where when you don't have enough, that's when people feel depression. Ooh! Wow. Okay. Yeah, and people have probably heard of serotonin reuptake inhibitors, all the antidepressants, a lot of the antidepressants that are used now yes. work in the serotonin system. That is yeah. Now these are names these are names that are familiar to me, but I guess either I don't remember what they're all about, you know, or right. uh, maybe I never knew quite the difference, let's say, between serotonin and uh, dopamine, mm -hmm. uh, but I like the anticipation hormone. I think that's really, that that's really good. Yeah, yeah. What's the last one, E? E, all right, E is for endorphins. Endor oh, that's another familiar name. What, is, what are endorphins? A lot of people have heard of endorphins. We release endorphins when we are engaged in fun activities. We release endorphins with exercise, for example, as long as we're enjoying it. And the word endorphin has in common with the word morphine. It's got a similar word root in there. And endorphins yeah. hide the experience of pain. Hmm. Same okay. way, yes, it's the same. It's the what we call the opioid receptors. All right, so it's the natural pain reducing, natural, yeah, pain hiding. It masks and diminishes the experience of pain. Yes, that's now that that all comes back to me. I've heard all this before. So, so uh, actually, kind of interestingly, you know, what, what, uh, I mean, things just happen. We breathe, you know, it's involuntary. So, all these things are going around in our system. But what you're saying is that. Uh, these reactions that we have or trigger a release of hormones or that make us feel good and happy and maybe <clears throat> some of these languages far more than others really trigger us and the other ones are like you wasted your time uh, okay. at least to our body subconsciously. Like, like you went to fix a, a plumbing pipe instead of giving a hug. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you can draw some connections directly between some of them, right? Like physical touch, of course, is going to, that's a very good way to cause oxytocin release, all right? Serotonin, here's another fun fact about serotonin. 
most of it, 80% of the serotonin in our bodies, it's not in the brain, it's in our gut. Wow. Yeah, so when people are resting and spending time, my guess, I haven't seen research on this, but my hypothesis would be that spending, when people have quality time as their main love language, that's, that, that's going to give them the time to sort of settle down, be with the other person, and have more serotonin floating around because the gut is not busy uh, being pushed aside while you're working and on the go. So, so the, old, uh, the old saw of uh, uh, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach is the <laughs> serotonin path. I'll bet it is. I'll bet you. <laughs> That's right. Wow, you know the uh, this is this is absolutely fascinating. Of course, we I've heard about the love languages, um, and they all make sense. I mean, without knowing the hormonal connection, right. they still make sense. You know, some people like to be touched, some people don't. Um, but knowing the hormonal connection, it really makes sense that these are powerful. Uh, we call them languages, for lack of a better word, but powerful ways of communicating yes wow that's is great yeah so is, is there um uh to to take it a step further so if let's say um uh, you don't respond well to uh acts of service and if you wanted to, and you recognize that now you as a professional i came into you with a problem would you give me a supplement to say hey you really want to get along with this person who's an active service kind of person, okay? Uh, I'll give you the supplement and maybe it'll make you more receptive to it. <laughs> does it not work that way? Actually, it does work that way. Really? You, we've talked about this a lot and you know I love to talk about all the hormones. For example, oxytocin works better in, the, in an environment of good estrogen in the body. Hmm. Ah. So younger women with more estrogen that are more commonly having the babies, okay, just for this one example, uh, they are bonding, they're not necessarily to a great life partner, but definitely to a good partner with whom to perpetuate the species and make babies. And the wow. oxygen actually works more intensely when there's plenty of estrogen floating around. Hmm. Yes. So as I like to say, when women go towards perimenopause and menopause, there's less estrogen around and there's less, they're less bonded to the family. Of course, I'm super generalizing, but what I like to say is that it's the point of life where we are, we move a little bit away from the family itself, bonding with the family and go out into the world and become ambassadors and secretary of states and presidents of nations. Wow, so let me yes. put my Dr. Google hat on for a moment, okay? Because we know that it's all made up, a lot of it is. So with my Dr. Google, so I'm thinking to myself, so let's say, uh, let's take the male-female relationship, uh, married for a long time, and uh, uh, she's just not like she used to be, okay? So if you go see Dr. Liz, maybe she can give you a shot of something that you used to have when you were younger, but you don't have it now for a variety of reasons, and you can regain what you once, how you once reacted. Is that possible? It's definitely possible. If I could do it in one shot, Art, I could retire. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we more, wouldn't want that. It's more like a symphony. It's more like working on all the different hormones as the same way as referring to the different sections of an orchestra. It's more like that. And luckily, we love you. We three love to talk about all these different hormones and the impact that they have. But there's no question that even these bonding hormones that we're talking about today have a different impact. You know, oxytocin works differently in the presence of testosterone compared to estrogen. All right. So we've got that increased bonding effect. All right. So it's very individual, but it's a lot of fun. And I love, you know, hormones are the chemistry of how we feel. 
So I yeah. love putting it in this context. And I also make sure that people are able to know, not just, of course, we work on their hormone balance, but we also want to make sure that, I, you know, I, sometimes I take five minutes and do this little discussion of the love languages so that they, the couple can be in a really good harmony and enjoy each other and be in partnership. Wow. What a fascinating uh, look into human relations uh, through hormones, you know. And as my yeah. mother would say, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this has been absolutely, as, as always, actually, uh, an amazing, uh, a fun conversation about stuff that, you know, we take for granted, uh, but just don't understand some of the underlying uh, things uh, affecting us. And uh, just another great uh, conversation. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.